We're here today with Dr. Yuri Shevchuk. Uh, he is a lecturer at Columbia University. Uh, what can you tell us about the work that you do? Uh, I teach Ukrainian language as well as a course called Soviet Post-Soviet Colonial Post-Colonial Cinema, which is basically a critical uh, discussion of the role of cinema in formation of identity. Uh, and I'm also founding director of the Ukrainian Film Club at Columbia University, which so far, to the best of my knowledge, is the only permanent forum of Ukrainian film outside Ukraine. What has the role of cinema been in developing a Ukrainian civic identity um, since uh, independence and since the Euromaidan? Uh, it has been uh, not what it should have been, in my opinion, uh, after an unprecedented uh, civic mobilization uh, that happened uh, in 2013 in Ukraine, uh, if only because Ukrainian uh, cultural field, the sphere of culture and language, are still very solidly dominated by Russia. And uh, so the signals that has been originating from this field were mixed, to say the least. Uh, what was important for me and very indicative of the current state of Ukrainian culture and uh, larger identity is the fact that almost immediately after the victory of Maidan, uh, we got to hear a new quote civic ideology uh, expressed in a very concise a slogan which was art articulated in two languages at the same time, Yedina Krajina, Yedina Strana, meant to say that it doesn't matter what language you speak and uh, what culture you belong to, as long as you love Ukraine and as long as you want Ukraine to be independent, democratic, oriented towards European values. And all of that uh, would be absolutely uh, wonderful and uh, uh, helpful for, you, for a larger kind of term project of a democratic free Ukraine. The problem with that uh, I, new ideology was that it was used basically as a justification to continue business as usual. Uh, not only in the sphere of culture, but in the sphere of not building a uh, Ukrainian nation. And so, basically, we haven't seen any kind of correction of what has been the official policy in Ukraine for the last uh, 25 years, basically, uh, the policy of very aggressive, consistent Russification uh, that is absolutely, to my mind, uh, clear in television, in the press, in government, because uh, even a perfunctory look at all these spheres immediately reveals that compared to 67, by some accounts now 80 plus percent of Ukrainians who declare their mother tongue to be Ukrainian, that the way Ukrainian is not used in uh, the spheres of strategic communication like government, like business, like finances, like the press, tells us that uh, we are faced with continuing Russification, if only by different means. The television where identity is created, current identity, is all either Russian or mixed Russian-Ukrainian, but the mixture is 
done in such a way that Ukrainian is really on the background or presented in a very impoverished, pale uh, form that is not appealing to anybody who, who wants to make a choice between the two languages. And let's remember that unlike previously where when uh, education was the strategic sphere that molded uh, an individual's cultural identity and linguistic identity before, now that field is mass media and television and uh, film. Uh, interesting you'd mention that. I mean, uh, you know, pluralism, ethnic pluralism, pluralism uh, linguistic pluralism is a Western value. Uh, bilingualism uh, exists in other countries. I think of France, Switzerland, Belgium. Um, what is the difference between those countries and Ukraine? Bilingualism is when one person or one community speaks two languages and can switch from one to another. In Ukraine, this term does not apply. It only applies to Ukrainian speakers who are invariably bilingual. 96% of Russian speakers in Ukraine are monolingual. So this is an asymmetric bilingualism. It's a colonial bilingualism. And there is no way such bilingualism can be conducive to national understanding, to a sense of much or badly needed uh, national solidarity that is based on common values and on mutual respect. Yes, there are four, to the best of my knowledge, official languages in Switzerland, Retro-Roman, Italian, uh, German, and French. But I asked my Swiss friends whether there is a policy of mixing languages on their television like, let us say, Retro-Roman and Italian are close languages. So the argument, much as the colonial argument in Ukraine is made, well, the main thing is that you understand each other, all else doesn't matter. They don't mix French with Italian or Italian with Retro-Roman. It didn't occur, there are no such programs in Switzerland. Switzerland does not have an imperial power whose history is that breathing down its neck over centuries and trying to grab its land the way Ukraine has in Russia. No other neighbor of Switzerland uses the fact that its language is spoken in Switzerland as a pretext to grab territories and uh, attack that country. I don't think we want the model of Canada, because Canada, uh, I lived in Canada for five years. I worked in uh, a Canadian government institution. And despite the fact that the requirement to speak French is a prerequisite to getting that job, I heard the kind of French that English-speaking Canadians speak. And I can't call it a functional, a, a functional uh, competent French language. So Canadian bilingualism with uh, few and very localized exceptions is non-existent. It's, it's a wish more than it's a de facto bilingualism. To me, bilingualism, the rhetoric of bilingualism is yet another justification to continue the policies of Russification and uh, war by other means. We uh, have been at war with Russia since the incorporation of Ukraine into Russian Empire. The, we tend to forget that war can be waged not only, not only by weapons, but also by symbolic means and by means such as language. And those means sometimes are much more effective than, those, uh, than weapons. In cultural field, Ukrainians seem to have capitulated to Russia. And signs of this capitulation is this uh, acceptance 
of what essentially is a new and very clever strategy of Russian cultural war against Ukrainians that is uh, expressed by this slogan of single country, Yedina Krajina, Yedina Strana. So you call it a policy of Russification. Uh, how much of it, though, is less a policy and more uh, acting on convenience um, in that it is the language of trade with Ukraine's historically largest trading partner? Um, and for simply for sake of convenience for people who grew up speaking that language and uh, without any political motivation simply continue speaking that language? There are so many questions in, in, in this one question that you posed. Uh, we're talking about government, and where government is concerned, both action and inaction is policy, in my mind. So uh, there is a going kind of belief that the Ukrainian government for uh, over the last 25 years has not had a cultural policy of promoting uh, Ukrainian language, Ukrainian culture, Ukrainian cinema, Ukrainian book printing, Ukrainian television, and on and on and on and on. To me, that is policy. The absence of support for things Ukrainian in culture and in identity building is a consistent, conscious policy. It's a policy choice. And uh, that's the end of discussion for me. On the other hand, the government, with very few exceptions limited to, ver to very short periods of time of misguided, confused, efforts to promote Ukrainian culture under Yushchenko has been consistently engaged in this on the surface laissez-faire policy conducted by the oligarch dominated media looking the other way while all the principal media channels and like empires, one plus one, Inter, ICTV, and on and on and on, engaged in uh, the policies of Russification. Isn't it, again, uh, out of sake of convenience, that uh, films are already being uh, filmed in Russia, in the Russian language, that films uh, and TV shows are already being dubbed into the Russian language in Russia for distribution in Russia, and since those already exist, it is less expensive uh, and less tedious to simply air something that is being shown elsewhere and that most of the country already understands, um, as opposed to paying more or spending more resources on dubbing a particular Western TV show into Ukrainian or even producing a Ukrainian language television show in Ukraine. I, I, I see the argument and uh, it would seem that there is uh, an innocent kind of side of trying to maximize one's profits. Except that in Ukraine we have heard and we have seen many occasions when a Ukrainian product, highly successful, highly popular, done at the very highest level of uh, professional skill, is consistently ignored and excluded from the market. I'm talking about years of marginalizing the film about the Holodomor, which, called, which is called The Living. We organized its American premiere here at Columbia. I showed it tens of different venues, invariably to a very enthusiastic reception by the people, including in Ukraine. It took like five years for this film to finally be shown sometime after midnight by some kind of a marginal channel. To me, that seems strange for somebody who wants to maximize their appeal and their commercial, their benefits, their incomes by using a good product. So to take that argument that whatever pays is fair game, I don't think we, want to, we would want to accept that. But what we hear from people who say that, well, this is 
this is uh, cheaper, this makes more business sense, I would take uh, that argument with a very big pinch of salt. Uh, this model of business is inherently colonialist and imperialist. Because if we look at countries like smaller countries that are more comparable to Ukraine in their dynamics, in their size, in their scale, like Poland, like Romania, that argument is not used as a justification of not having one's own national cinema, national television, and in larger terms, national cultural product. Nobody comes up with that. This is inherently a colonialist argument, and, we, and it has to be exposed as such. Dr. Yuri Shevchuk, thank you very much for speaking with us today. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Uh...